Hi, welcome to Tech Talk. My name is Ryan with All Computer Resources. Today I'm going to show you how to replace an engine computer and perform a 30 minute key relearn procedure for any GM vehicle. Now there is two different 30 minute procedures, so let's make sure you're doing the right one. Welcome back. Yes, GM has two different types of 30 minute procedures. We need to find out what type of procedure you need to perform for your vehicle. Today, we'll talk about pass key one, pass key two, and PK3. Take a look at the screen. The top portion shows the keys for pass key one and pass key two. On the key itself, you'll see a resistor or a chip. If you have PK3, you'll notice the letters PK and the number three stamped on the metal portion. Now, very important, if you see PK3 plus or your key does not have a chip or resistor, this is the wrong procedure. I'll include a link below to PK3 plus and passlock, and that's the one you need to follow. Before we begin, you'll need an ECM. The ECM needs to be VIN programmed and calibrated to your vehicle. If you need to purchase one, you can visit us at allcomputerresources.com or call us toll free 1-866-699-5230. We'll be happy to help you out. Our PCMs are programmed, calibrated, VIN specific to your vehicle with a lifetime warranty at a fraction of the dealer cost. Now before we start this procedure, it's important to check the battery and make sure it's in good working order and is fully charged. This is a 30 minute procedure and we don't want the battery to die while we're doing it. Another very important step is to ensure that there's no other underlying issues with the vehicle. If you have bad coils, bad spark plugs, bad ignition wires, bad alternator, things like this can cause shortages to a PCM and damage that one as well. Let's make sure your vehicle is in good working condition before you install the new ECM. Let's go out to the vehicle, let's install the new ECM, and let's get the 30 minute procedure done and get you back on the road. Before you replace the PCM, we need to disconnect the battery. Remove the negative terminal from the battery and place it away from the battery terminal. Once the battery is disconnected, locate the PCM for your vehicle. The location of the PCM will vary. The PCM will have one or more plugs. In this case, we have three. The harness is fastened to the plug with either a latch mechanism or bolted. Analyze your application and be sure to remove the harness from each plug carefully. Some latches have press release and it's important to locate them to avoid damage. Be sure that all bolts or latches are completely loosened before attempting to remove the harness. The harness may be snug and could require slight force. We recommend pulling the harness from the base, not the wires. If you wiggle the harness slightly while pulling, the harness should slide right off the plug. If you have more than one plug, repeat the process for each one. Once the harness is removed, you can now remove the old PCM. Check the PCM for ground cables and remove them as well. Once the PCM is out, inspect the harness. There's a good chance there is a buildup of dirt and grime and it's important to clean the connectors to ensure good contact. We use 99% isopro alcohol and a brush to loosen up dirt and grime. Once you have the harness connectors clean, use compressed air and blow off any loose particles. Install the new PCM back in its correct location and connect any bolts and ground wires. Most modules will have color-coded harnesses to assist you with lining up the correct plug. Be sure that none of the pins on the PCM are bent before installing the harness. Install the harness by sliding it onto the correct plug. Do not force this. There are guides on the plug to ensure they are positioned correctly. Once the harness is in the correct position, close the latch or install the bolt that was removed. 
reconnect the battery, and we are ready for the relearn procedure. Now that you have the PCM installed in the vehicle and addressed any other underlying issues, it's time to perform the key relearn procedure. Now before you do that, you wanna make sure your radio is off, your headlights are off, and the AC is off so we don't drain the battery. It's particularly important that this procedure is followed correctly so that the theft deterrent system knows the commands that we're trying to achieve. Let's come around to the dashboard and I'll walk you through these steps. Turn the key to the on position. Do not try to start the vehicle. Notice the cluster and look for your security light. Set a timer for 10 minutes. This is the first of three cycles. In approximately 10 minutes, wait for the security light to turn off. Once the light is gone, turn off the ignition for five seconds. After the five seconds, turn the key to the on position. Do not try to start vehicle. Notice the cluster and look for your security light. Set timer again for 10 minutes. This is the second of three cycles. If the security light did not turn off after about 12 minutes, there could be another issue with the vehicle related to the BCM, the instrument cluster, or an electrical issue within the wiring or the fuse panel. The engine computer does not control the theft system in these vehicles. So if the light didn't turn off and you have other issues, additional diagnosis needs to be done. Now let's get back to the relearn procedure. Once the clock approaches 10 minutes, wait for the security light to turn off. Once the light is gone, turn off the ignition for five seconds. After the five seconds, turn the key to the on position. Do not try to start vehicle and look for the security light again. Set for timer for 10 minutes. This is the third of three cycles. Once the clock approaches 10 minutes, wait for the security light to turn off. Once the light is gone, turn off the ignition for five seconds. After the five seconds, turn the key to the start run position and start the vehicle. Okay, so there you have it folks. We've performed a security relearn and the vehicle is running and you're back on the road. Now, if you performed the cycle a third time and the vehicle did not start, you may have to proceed a fourth or a fifth time. If you continue to have problems thereafter, you're going to have to troubleshoot the vehicle a little further. Remember, the ECU does not control the theft deterrent, so troubleshooting needs to be done elsewhere. We're glad that you tuned in today. We hope our video on this GM relearn procedure helped you get back on the road. And if we can help or assist you in any way, please go to our website or give us a call. We'll be happy to help.